as simulated attackers tried to overload an electrical system, cripple a water distribution network and shut down a gas plant, cyber defense operators across 26 national agencies sprung into action to neutralize the assaults on a fictional state's critical infrastructure. These were among the scenarios that more than 200 participants went through from November 22 to 24 during the second critical infrastructure defense exercise held at the National University of Singapore. The three-day exercise organized by the SAF's Digital and Intelligence Service DIS and Cyber Security Agency of Singapore CSA involved employees from organizations such as Changi Airport Group, National Water Agency PUB, Sinoco Energy and Singtel. To ensure that the scenarios were realistic, officers from the DIS, CSA, the Defence Science and Technology Agency and Infocom Media Development Authority modelled their attacks on advanced persistent threat APT and cyber criminal groups' tactics and methods. Said Colonel Tan Xiangyang, commander of the DIS Cyber Defence Group. Kol Tan said the primary objective of the exercise is to prepare and train Singapore's cyber defenders in the critical information infrastructure sectors, which includes an experience of what it is like to be in a nation under attack scenario. Such sectors include power, water, telecom and aviation. Preparations for the exercise took about four months. And about 1,000 physical and virtual systems were created for this purpose, he added. Military expert for me for Yvonne Tang, who was in charge of leading a team of participants from PUB and CSA in defending a water plant network. Said the simulated attack started with a phishing email, followed by an attack on the physical test bed, where values from the water plant were manipulated by hackers. We had to closely monitor what are the vulnerabilities that are exposed to the external facing internet-connected systems and how we can remediate this action, she said. Part of the scenarios included how quickly critical systems can be restored after being attacked. Oftentimes, agencies have business continuity plans that can include steps like recloning a system or reverting the digital platform to a previous stable version, she added. Speaking to the media on November 24, Senior Minister of State for Defence Hang Chi Hao said cyber attacks have become a fact of life. You can see so many examples in the world, real wars, real attacks, commercial sector. Security-related sectors, everyday life is disrupted, he said. This exercise therefore provides a platform for agencies to jointly prepare to deal with such attacks, he said. It brings together many agencies throughout government to come together to learn how to defend together, Mr. Hang added. This year's exercise involved twice as many participants as the inaugural edition in 2022. A sign that more of the nation's digital infrastructure needs to be prepared to face down cyber attacks. The number of participating agencies also grew from 17 to 26. Separately, this also signed memorandums of understanding for cyber collaboration with Google, ST Engineering, and Ensign InfoSecurity, a cyber security joint venture between Staha and Temasek. The Ministry of Defense said the agreements will help expand this partnership with the technology sector. The disruption to web services of public healthcare institutions on November 1st was triggered by abnormal spikes in internet traffic. Also known as a distributed denial of service DDoS attack. Responding on November 22nd to parliamentary questions filed by MPs on the seven hour outage to the websites of public hospitals, polyclinics, and healthcare clusters, Health Minister Ong Yi Kang said on November 22 that the abnormal traffic circumvented anti ddos blocking services and overwhelmed national healthcare ITE provider Synax Firewall. This caused the firewall to filter out the traffic, as well as other services, 
requiring internet connectivity, including websites and internet reliance services, which became inaccessible. On whether MOH knew the motives behind the attacks, Mr. Ong said such attacks are generally on the rise and that attack methods are changing. Those who deploy them have a variety of motives. From hacktivism to petty misdemeanor, he said in a written reply. The defenses against DDoS attacks will have to constantly evolve to keep up with developing threats. Synax receives and blocks an average of 3. 000 malicious emails per day and 1.7 million attempts to bypass internet-facing firewalls per month, he noted. In a related reply, Minister for Communications and Information Josephine Teo said the government and owners of digital infrastructure here will mitigate and manage cyber attack risks, taking into account how critical a given system is. We allocate more resources to harden the most critical systems and ensure a baseline of measures for all systems, she said. Cybersecurity defense has to be complemented by business continuity plans that mitigate the impact of e-service disruptions when they occur. While some disruption might be inevitable, prolonged disruptions should not be the norm, she added. In addition to prevention, we must also focus on recovering quickly. Following further investigations with the Cyber Security Agency of Singapore, Sinex said on November 20 that there was no evidence to indicate that public healthcare data and internal networks had been compromised.